On January 1st, Elegant Fragrances Company issues 1 million face value five-year bonds with an annual interest payment of $55,000 to be paid each December 31st. The market interest rate is 6%. Using the effective interest rate method, that's the way we usually calculate this stuff, uh, effective interest rate method of amortization, Elegant Fragrances most likely record, and it gives you three different options. A, an interest expense of $55,000 on its 2010 income statement. B, a liability of uh, $982,674 on December 31st, 2010 balance sheet. Or C, uh, $58,736 cash outflow from operating activities on 2010 statement of cash flows. How do we approach this? And is there a way for us to save time by, by figuring out what is going on here intuitively. So let's see what we can eliminate and, and maybe save ourselves some time. Interest expense of 55,000, that's 2010 income statement. Well, let's start off from the bat. 55,000 on a million, that's not 6%, that's 5.5%. So what we know is that this 6% on the million right here would be probably about 60,000 and it's not that. So we know it's not issued at par, and as a result, we know the interest expense is not gonna be 55,000. You're right, the cash payment on the bond is gonna be 55,000, but interest expense is something different because the reality is we're paying interest on the money lent. It doesn't matter about the cash flow payments. Yes, it has a percentage, and yes, it has that little symbol right next to it, but that does not mean that it's the interest expense. The interest expense is the market rate of interest multiplied the, by the amount outstanding on the debt. So right here, the interest expense of 55,000, we know that this answer right here, A, we know it's not that. So we can eliminate it and let's not think about it anymore. Now we have a liability of 982,000 on the December 31st, 2010 balance sheet. Now, liability of 982,000 on December 30, 20, uh, 31st, 2010 balance sheet, let's see. It makes interest payments, bonds with annual interest payments of 55,000. So the interest rate is gonna be that the bond has implicitly is 5.5% and the market rate is six. So this could be the right answer, all right? Uh, and then this last one of uh, 58,736 cash outflow from operating activities. Wait a second, cash outflows from operating activities holy cow, we don't even have to use our calculator for this one. Well, you might be thinking, okay, well, maybe I need to know if it's operating uh, or investing or financing. When it comes to bonds and interest rates, uh, interest can either be considered part of operations or part of financing. And there really comes down to whether or not you need the debt to be part of the operations. It's kind of like a you know a deep philosophical thing to, to debate about. So the operating activity isn't the clue. The key clue here is the cash outflow. What's the cash outflow? It tells us in the problem. The problem tells us it's 55,000. 55,000 is the cash outflow. Without even touching your calculator, you can know the correct answer is B. You don't even need your calculator for this to figure this out. Now, if you did do the, the calculation and you put it in the calculator, we'd know what it is, but you don't even need your calculator for this. You know that it's not gonna be a cash outflow of 58,000. The cash outflow flow is 55,000. Um, so that's what that's that's essentially what what we have for the answer. It's B. The answer is B. Now, let's say you wanted to do the calculation. You can get out your calculator and put these numbers in, but it's a waste of time. We can know just from the principles whether or not you know what the answer is, and we figured this out pretty quickly. And just for the sake of of showing you because I know some people are going to say, well, I just want to do the calculator. I just want to do the calculator anyway. I just want to get it right. You're wasting your time. You're doing it wrong, but I'll do it and I'll show you how this answer comes out in the calculator because you have to not only do the calculation for what it gets recorded as, but you also have to do the journal entry for the amount it gets amortized off of the discount payment. So we'll do the calculator. We'll do this, but I'm telling you for these problems, if you can figure these out without your calculator, it is the way to go. So let's get the calculator. Let's clear everything out, clear time value, clear work. Let's make sure we're at the end of period, end of period payments. All right. So this is a million dollar bond, 1 million. I'm going quickly because I assume that you've already watched the videos and known how th this works. Uh, the bond pays 55,000. 55,000 right here from the problem, it goes into the payment. 
interest rate per year. Well, that's the 6%. That's the market rate of interest. And how many years? It's a five-year bond. Five-year bond is N, five years, second quit. How many payments per year? One, done, compute, present value. Now you'll notice this is different than the 982, it's 978. Well, that's because at the end of the year, you're gonna have that interest payment. And remember, because it's issued at a discount, you're gonna have uh, that that contra liability account. So, you know, uh, discount on bonds payable, right? And so you're gonna have to amortize that off uh, for the payment. So let's do this really quick and, and write this down. We got our present value calculation. The present value calculation was 978938. 978, 938, all right? So that's what we've got for it. Now, our interest expense is gonna be that times the interest rate, which is 6%, all right? Now, remember from the prior problem, it's the rate when it was issued, the 6% rate, not what the current market rates are, all right? So that, that 978938 times 6%, let's take this times 0 0.06. We're going to get 58,736. So 58,736. All right. And we pay 55,000 in our coupon payment. Remember, that's the actual cash we pay. So how much is going to be amortized off of this? Well, the net difference of these two, 58,736 minus this, which is 3,736. So that 3,736 is so we had that 978938, and let's just go to our calculator and add back 3736, all right? So we go here, and we're gonna add back 3736, oops. 82,674.00. And that's the correct answer there. You saw how long that took to enter all the stuff in, to get it right, to make sure we did the calculation right. If you try to do this on every problem instead of using the intuition of the principles, it's gonna take a lot longer. It's much better to just know what it is, put the answer down, go on to the next one.